Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is kind of go over a step-by-step -step process for how to solve absolute value equations. Um, basically when we have an absolute value equation, especially if it's one that has a couple of operations, the main important thing is we need to isolate our absolute value. A lot of times we'll have multi-step absolute value equation that we need to solve for, and we'll have our absolute value symbol as, you know, as being multiplied by a number, or we have a number being added to it. So we need to undo those, all right? Get your absolute value isolated, just like you'd isolate a variable. Isolate it, undo all the operations using properties of equality in reverse order of operations operations, kind of just like you're solving an equation, but you're solving for the absolute value. Once you have the absolute value solved, we need to create our two cases. Two cases for values that can provide us with um, a value that is going to be positive or negative within the absolute value equation. So to do that, when we create our two cases, we're, going to, we're simply going to create a case where it's going to be the absolute value is equal to whatever's on the right hand side. And then whatever's in the absolute value, again, remove the absolute value. But whatever was inside the absolute value is equal to whatever, was e whatever it was equal to. And then whatever was inside the absolute value equal to the negation of what was ever on the other side. And make sure that when you're negating the opposite side, if you have an expression such as like 3x minus 2, that you have to apply distributive property. You have to negate each and every one of those terms. Um, so then you go ahead and solve. And you're going to have two solutions, right? You're going to go and solve. You'll have two solutions, two values that are going to make, um, uh, that will give you a positive and a negative value for inside the absolute equation. But the important thing is we want to make sure, do, are both of those solutions actually solutions to our equation, or is one of them, or both of them, extraneous? So the only way to determine that is we've got to take our solutions and plug them back into our original equation. When we plug them back into our original equation, if the equation does not simplify down to a true equation where one side is equal to the other, then that solution is what we call extraneous. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is kind of like a step-by-step -step process for how to solve absolute value equations. Thanks.